opposites are a really important idea in addition and especially with integers and in math in general. Whenever you're adding, it's it's always useful to think about where opposites are that might really help you in solving a problem. For example, let's say we had two opposites, five and negative five. Now, I mean, why are these opposites? It's because their distance to zero is the exact same. And in fact, we call that distance absolute value. So opposites have equal absolute value. And another thing you'll always notice is that if you add them up, let's say we did 5 plus negative 5, or negative 5 plus 5, and then we get 0. So if I start at 0 and I add 5, and then I add negative 5, I go back to 0. Or if I start with negative 5, and then add 5, I come back to 0. So opposites, no matter what, always come back to 0. So we say they always sum to 0. Now, this actually happens quite often in the real world, and a quick example is hydrogen. The atom hydrogen. Now, an atom is one of the smallest components that makes up our known universe, and hydrogen is a very simple atom. In the center, we have a proton, and then orbiting that proton, this is a very terrible diagram, by the way, is a little electron. And uh, we say that hydrogen has a charge of zero. Now this is exactly like opposites because the value of a proton equals positive one with the value of an electron equals negative one. To find the charge, we add up the amount of protons and electrons. Since these two numbers are opposites, we get zero. The charge of a hydrogen is zero. Now. This becomes really useful if you want to think about addition because then you can add other electrons. So one way of thinking about an atom with two electrons is to say we can do one, positive one proton, plus two negatives, add them all up, and we get negative one, and now the charge is negative one. Or you can say, well, <clears throat> this proton and this electron cancel each other out. They're opposites. What's left over? One electron. So when you're adding numbers, you can think about where the opposites are and then think about what's left over. Let's look at another example. Um, let's say we had 6 plus negative 8. Well, negative 8 is really negative 6 and negative 2. Why did I do that? Because 6 and negative 6, they're opposites. It's 0. And what's left over is negative 2. So the answer is negative 2. Another example, let's say we have a bigger number, like 53 plus negative 66. One way I think about it is that, well, here's, we have 53 positive ones over here. Here we have 66 negative ones. Well, out of those 66 negative ones, there are 53 negatives at least, and 13 left over. This is useful to me because I realize that the positive 53 and that negative 53, we sum them up and we get 0. And the answer is what's left over. It's negative 13. And in fact, I often try to picture this in my head. Um, I, I think about a number line. And when we're adding two numbers, let's say 11 plus negative 13, I quickly sketch a number line in my mind with the numbers. Here's 11. And then now 13 will be a little bit farther, right past negative 11. So if I add negative 13 and 11, I know what I'm doing is combining the length, absolute value of this side, with the smaller absolute value of this side. And then I line the bars up. Here's positive 11. And po negative 13 has a little bit more. So when you sum up these two quantities, you get what is left over. In this case, negative 2. The reason the answer is negative 2 is because negative 13 has a little bit more weight, has a higher absolute value and further from 0 than the positive 11. And I, I'm thinking about that because I know that negative 13 is made up from negative 11 and negative 2. And negative 11 is the opposite with positive 11. 
So whenever you're adding up positive and negative numbers, try to think about where the opposites are and then what's left over because what's left over will always be your answer.